Well, greetings to you all around the world. I'm recording this to the former Worldwide Church of God members, and I'm standing in South Africa in front of a beautiful tapestry illustrating unity, the unity of a marriage, an African marriage where a type of dowry called labola in Africa is to be paid. Labola is that which a prospective husband or head of his family undertakes to give the head of a prospective wife's or bride's family in gratitude of letting their son marry their daughter. It is either in the form of property, of livestock, or a sum of money. Now, brethren and friends, for us, the true Christians, Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price for his bride, the Church of God. We read what Paul wrote in Ephesians 5.25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. He has gave himself. That is the ultimate act of love. He was scourged to an inch of his life and then to be murdered and to die to redeem his wife, the church of God. He gave himself to suffer on a cross or stake to save the church of God. So we are to be willing, you and I, you and I, to deny ourselves and to bear trouble and trial just as Christ did, that we may promote the happiness of the wife, which is the church of God. However, something terrible happened to Christ's wife, the church of God. Notice Jeremiah 10, 20. My tabernacle is spoiled, and all my cords are broken. My children are gone forth of me, and they are not. There is none to stretch forth my tent anymore, and to set up my curtains. For the pastors, or ministers, are become brutish, and have not sought the Lord. Therefore they shall not prosper, and all their sheep, their flocks, their members shall be scattered. The church referred to as my tabernacle was scattered, and has turned its back on her husband. And she's not doing the work he requires of her. Yet the leaders have become brutish in the sense that they have burnt up the food, the truth, and to lie to the scattered church, saying, Jesus has commissioned us to preach the gospel. It is our work, they say. Notice Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 8. The priests, these men, these men, said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. The entire ministry and hierarchy of the church of God have turned their back to God, and because of that, God says to them in Jeremiah 18 verse 17, I will scatter them as with the east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. Now, why will God do this? Well, because of Jeremiah 32 verse 33. And they have turned unto me, the back, God says, and not the face. Though I taught them, rising up early and teaching them, yet they have not listened to receive instruction. But they have set their sins, their abominations in the house which is called by my name, to defile it. Yes, they were all taught by an apostle sent by Christ, even though truth was revealed to them, the ministry of the church of God have defiled it by destroying the unity of the Holy Spirit, separating families and friends into factions and groups all over the world, which are contrary to Christ. Let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 10, and verse 22. Behold, the noise of the brat is come, and a great commotion out of the north country, to make the cities of Judah desolate, and a den of dragons, and overflowing scourge is coming, my dear friends, and is coming quickly like a tsunami. Notice Isaiah 28, verses 14 and 15. Wherefore hear the word of the Lord, you scornful men that rule this people, which is in the church of God, which is in Jerusalem. 
Because you have said we have made a covenant with death and with hell. We are in agreement. When the overflowing skirt shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. The ministry teach the church of God they will escape to a place of safety. But God says to them in verse 18, And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand when the overflowing scourge shall pass through. Then you shall be trodden down by it. You see, my dear friends, God knows as he inspired Jeremiah to write in Jeremiah 10, 23, O eternal, I know that the way of man is not in himself, it is not in man that walks to direct his steps. Yet these recalcitrant men that you saw should be crying out to God in verses 24 and 25. O Lord God, correct me, but with judgment, not in your anger, lest you bring me to nothing. And pour out your fury upon the heathen that don't know you, and upon the families that call not upon your name. For they have eaten up Jacob, Israel, and devoured him, and consumed him, and have made his habitation desolate. These leaders are guilty of all what the prophets are telling them. And their members, my friends, our friends, are so gullible, they will not apply Paul's teaching in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 21, which says to us, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. And by not proving what was told to them in Daniel chapter 12, verse 7, which reads, and I'll read it, that it shall be for a th time, times and a half, when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people. All these things shall be finished. Now half of that prophecy in this verse has been fulfilled. The power of the holy people, which was once known as the worldwide church of God, or the Philadelphia era, has been scattered. And that scattering began to happen in 1987 to this present day. The three principal men who were responsible for beginning the destruction of the true restored doctrines to the worldwide church of God are Joe, Joseph Takach Jr., Greg R. Albrecht, J. Michael Fazell. And of course, this includes their wives who were culpable as well. In the next part of the prophecy in Daniel 12, verse 7, or the three and a half year tribulation and the day of the Lord, is in the process of being set up at this very moment. I said starting, or set up, because the great tribulation is Satan's wrath on two physical nations, the American and the British peoples. And of course, it's going to consume the entire earth. Now, the pride of America's power is gone. The American army were ejected from Afghanistan by a ragtag terrorist organization. They fled like a dog with their tail between their legs. And the entire world saw it. And lately, over 2,000 American servicemen have left the military because of mandates forcing COVID vaccinations. Not a shot been fired, but they've left. The Americans and the British have not won a war nor a skirmish in decades. Brethren and friends, God will use a Nazi fascist Europe to punish Britain and America. Then he will use the communist hordes, Russia, China, North Korea, to wipe out the Roman Europe that will develop. And we are entering a time of world trouble, utter world chaos. At the moment, there's war, strife, violence in Asia, in Africa, in South America, as well as Europe and North America. The population explosion is a worldwide threat to human existence. There's crime and violence, sickness, disease, inequality, poverty, filth and squalor, degeneration, suffering. These infest all nations, especially America and Britain. Australia and New Zealand have become armed camps for their own citizens. Let me conclude this video with Jeremiah's prophecy in Jeremiah 30 verses 5 to 7. For thus says the eternal God, 
We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask now. Yes, you ask. And see whether a man does travail with child, is pregnant. Wherefore do we see every man with his hands on his stomach, on his loins, like a woman in travail, and faces are all turned to paleness. Alas, for that day is great. It's like it's never been before. It's a time of Israel's trouble, brethren. Trouble! And this is going to include the scattered churches of God. We will continue in this work to use the voice of Jesus Christ, the Bible, to blow the trumpet. So until next time, this is Michael Vinish saying goodbye, friends, and goodbye, brethren, around the world.